The TSMC manufactured Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset is finally here. And while its clock speeds are identical to the 8 Plus Gen 1, it is stacked slightly different. We still have one main core, but this time we have four performance cores instead of three, and we have three efficiency cores instead of four. And today we'll be comparing it using the new iQ11 to its predecessor chips, TSMC made Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and Samsung made Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, as well as the Samsung made Google Tensor G2 chip and TSMC made Apple A16 Bionic in three different benchmark runs where we'll test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score, and frames per second. All five devices have been updated to their latest software updates and while the Pixel is running a 5 nanometer chip, the rest are all running on 4 nanometer nodes. The iPhone has the highest clock speed here and the Pixel has the lowest. The four phones on the right are rocking LPDDR5 RAM modules while the iQ is running the latest LPDDR5 X RAM. The iPhone is using NVMe storage, the three Androids in the middle use UFS 3.1 and the iQ utilizes newer UFS 4.0 storage. The Xiaomi houses a dynamic 120 hertz display. The the Pixel has a 120Hz LTPO 1.0 panel, the Samsung and iPhone both use 120Hz LTPO 2.0 screens, and the iQ's LTPO 3.0 tech can reach 144Hz. The resolution of the Xiaomi and iPhone sits somewhere between QHD and Full HD, so I've dropped the rest to match them. The iQ, Xiaomi and Samsung are all set to their respective high performance modes, the Pixel runs at max performance with adaptive battery disabled, and the iPhone has no performance mode option at all. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu, Geekbench and 3 Mark, and in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. How much better is the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset when compared to its predecessors, the 8 Plus Gen 1 and 8 Gen 1 in terms of efficiency and performance? And can it stack up with Google's and Apple's latest offerings? This is Tech Neck, and without further ado, let's find out. Just before we get things going, I'll be checking out the battery percentages at the start of the test. We'll compare this at the end to get a milliamp hour per minute rating. We're gonna be using an emissivity level of 0.5 since it's the most accurate with electronic devices when testing out temperature, sitting over a room temperature of around 24.3 degrees in Celsius. And you can't really compare the temperature at the start, but if you were to choose the hottest one, that would be the Xiaomi and the coolest, that being the iPhone. Kickstarting things off here with Antutu, and I just thought I'd let you guys know, in my previous benchmark run where I tested the Google Pixel 7 Pro, it had that issue when opening up Antutu. It happened again in my recent battery life drain test as well, where it actually goes to a blank black screen after opening it up. It seems like that has been fixed now with a software update. Thank goodness. I mean, pixels take a ridiculous time in order to actually update software, like it, literally two hours. But we got there and it seems to be okay. I really do appreciate Antutu since they've put so much effort and energy into their tests. What you saw at the start was Swordsman, something new to Antutu version nine. And now we're doing Refinery, which is the same that we've seen in version eight. Things have changed up a bit in version nine when it comes to the video CTS and video decoding, which are both new, but we do have Terracotta Soldiers, which will happen after the refinery part, which we're getting into right now. My favorite part in this test, and I've actually seen them in real life, just a little quick piece of personal information about myself since I lived in China for so long. They're absolutely amazing and it looks fantastic. I wish all the statues came to life the way that they do in the test right here. And talking about performance, since that's why you guys are all here, it looks like all of them are running through everything pretty darn smooth. I can't really tell any apart from another except for the Pixel, where it looks a little bit more jittery when compared to the other devices over here, since the Tensor G2 chip is a little bit of a mid-ranger, I guess you could say. It is running on five nanometer node tech, but it just can't really keep up with what 2022 has to offer. Now you've got to remember that Google have actually put more energy into software as opposed to hardware this year with the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. And they've done a great job in terms of optimizations, which means that battery life has been fixed, which you'll see at the end of the test, which I have noticed using through personal day-to-day -day use, as well as when just using it in my recent battery drain test and the previous benchmark test that I ran earlier on this year. And it seems to do a great job in terms of optimization. So for day-to-day -day tasks, it's gonna do a great job, especially in terms of AI machine learning. But if you are a gamer or you wanna 
benchmark your phone, the Pixel is not the phone to go for. We have the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for that, that being the IQ11, which is literally a monster of a phone. And after testing temperatures out at the end of Antutu, the Xiaomi 12T Pro got the most temperature gain at 16.6, and the Pixel got the least at 10.6, because I guess you could say it did the least amount of work, and that's probably because of optimizations. It wants to perform less so that it can endure for longer, but I guess that we'll have to see when we do the battery drain test, so stay tuned for that. After running through Geekbench version five, and just to let you guys know, I checked the temperature as soon as that specific phone finishes the test to keep things more fair, and not when all of them finish, because then it would give room to cool down. The IQ11 actually added the most in temperature over there, and the Xiaomi added the least that time around, very strange. We'll be comparing temperatures right at the end of all benchmarks, so ending off here with 3D Mark Wildlife. And just to let you guys know, we are running Wildlife Extreme here. So the only difference between the standard and the extreme versions is that the standard runs at QHD render resolution, while this does 4K render resolution. The reason I'm using extreme is because most Androids actually cap out with flagship chips, and the iPhone caps at 60 FPS when running the regular 3D Mark Wildlife. So to keep things more fair, we're testing out extreme, which is quite extreme at 4K, and I haven't seen anything really surpassed 20 FPS when testing out Extreme. We'll have to see what happens at the end of this. The closest I've seen is probably the iPhone 14 Pro Max nearing that 20 FPS mark. But getting to the end of 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme over here, getting to those temperatures, all of them pretty much finished at the same time there. So we're testing out the temps now. The IQ actually dipped by negative two degrees in Celsius, which means that there was a bit of thermal throttling going on over there. And the Xiaomi 12T Pro only added 0.9 with the iPhone adding the most of 3.3 degrees in Celsius after the end of 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. And comparing temperatures from the start to the end of the test, it's clear that the Pixel 7 Pro is holding back performance in order to keep things cooler, only adding a total of 13.5 degrees in Celsius. And this time, the iPhone actually added the most, adding 18.9 degrees in Celsius. The Xiaomi 12T Pro got the hottest over here. And as you can see in terms of temperature, the IQ11 with that new Snapdragon chipset is actually keeping things cooler than its predecessors, which is fantastic to see. And when it comes to battery life, you can clearly see that TSMC have worked really hard on the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. Since its battery only drained by 6% as opposed to the 7% on the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and 8% on the Samsung made Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra had the worst battery drain of 21.05 milliamp hours per minute and the worst percentage drain of 8%. The IQ11 got a drain rating of 15.79 milliamp hours per minute, matching the Pixel, and Google have literally focused on optimizations in order to be more efficient, so it's good to see that. I can't wait to test out the IQ in an upcoming battery drain test, so stay tuned for that. And of course, the iPhone is always the champ of battery drain, doing the best in this test. And finally, what you guys have been waiting for, the benchmark score results. And I must say, I was absolutely stunned when I saw them. The IQ11 with the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset got a whopping 1,269,673 points, wiping everything out the park here with the best CPU, GPU, memory, and user experience score across the board. With second place, not too far off, being the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 powered Xiaomi 12T Pro. Third, we had the iPhone, which is actually doing really well since the new Antutu version 9 is actually more optimized for the new iPhones. Fourth, we have the Samsung, and fifth, we have the Pixel. When it comes to Geekbench version five, the IQ and its new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset once again surprised me here with a great score, only placing second to that of the iPhone. Where the iPhone got 1,882 points, the IQ got 1,457 points, which is quite significantly better than the Xiaomi 12T Pro score of 1,303 points. This time, the Pixel placed fourth, and the Samsung placed fifth. When it comes to multi-core score within Geekbench version version 5. Once again, the IQ11 placed second year, only second to that of the iPhone. Not far off it, to be honest. It did noticeably better than the 12T Pro, which got 4,018 points. So more than 500 points of a jump because of the new stack that they have with their CPU cores on the 8 Gen 2. The Samsung now switches with the Pixel again, placing fourth and the Pixel placed fifth. Now, when it comes to graphics, we of course have the new Adreno 740, which is paired inside the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset found inside the IQ11. And Qualcomm has promised 25% better performance and 45% better power efficiency. We already saw that within the battery test of this benchmark test comparison. And when it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, 
it actually didn't do better than the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 powered Xiaomi 12T Pro, which beat it with an average of 16.1 FPS as opposed to the 15.2 FPS on the iQ 11. So that's second and third place. First taking the crown here is no doubt the iPhone with an average of 19.8 FPS. Fourth, we have the Samsung and fifth, once again, we have the Google Pixel 7 Pro. So there you guys have it. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 performance when compared to its predecessor chips, as well as what Google and Apple have to offer. Apple is still the top dog in most scenarios over here, especially when it comes to all things GPU, but Qualcomm are actually doing a great job with producing chips getting helped by the manufacturing company TSMC and I hope that they stick with them going forward since TSMC also manufacture the Apple A16 Bionic chip and all other Apple chips that we've seen. I'm pretty impressed with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 performance and I cannot wait to test it out in a battery drain test comparison. So stay tuned for that one. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the results of this test. This is Technic and I'll catch you all in the next one.